What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Sharp Bites. Now I know some of you more astute viewers at home might be able to notice that I am not sat in the Sharp Bite studio right now and that's because I'm out here in the Maldives. I know, I know, lucky me. But I thought what might be quite a cool idea is if I give you guys a guided snorkel tour to show you some of the incredible marine life that you can see right here. Now of course because I'm going to have a snorkel in my mouth I'm not going to be able to talk to you while I'm out there so it's going to be a voiceover. But I still thought it'd be quite a cool idea. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this guided snorkel tour of some of the cool things you can see here in the Maldives with a marine biologist. Okay, so here we are ready for a little snorkel then. The water temperature is pretty nice and warm, although I tend to wear my rash vest when I'm abroad in very sunny places because I burn so easily, even when I'm wearing Factor 50 sun cream. I know, I know. I'm pretty pasty. So straight off the bat here, we've got this awesome little spotted eagle ray, literally just a couple of meters away from the steps of my water villa. These spotted eagle rays are almost definitely juvenile individuals and you can tell that from their size. So this one's probably no more than 50 centimeters from wingtip to wingtip, but the adults can get to nearly 10 feet from wingtip to wingtip. Juvenile spotted eagle rays though will come into these shallow atolls for safety to make sure that they're far away from any larger fish or sharks who might want to eat them. And they'll like spend the first few years of their lives in shallow coral reefs and sand flats before they get a bit bigger and head out to the deeper reefs offshore. They're very skittish when they're juveniles. As you can see here, I got a little bit too close and with one swish of those fins, it was gone. They're super fast though, even these little ones. As I was heading out a bit further, I managed to somehow spot this porcupine ray who had buried itself in the sand. It's almost impossible to see it when you're at the surface, but as I dive down here, you can see it pretty clearly. The porcupine ray is a relatively rare species of stingray so I was really excited I managed to spot this one and unlike many other stingrays the porcupine rays don't actually have a sting on their tails instead it's got loads of small thorns all along its dorsal side and down its chunky tail you can't really see them very well because it's decided to completely bury itself in the sand which it's doing to try and stay camouflaged from any predators they are pretty tolerant of being approached though and you can see this one isn't really bothered by me at all my plan here is to head out towards the drop-off because the drop-off is awesome but on my way I swam past this black cheek moray eel named pretty appropriately for that black spot towards where you might imagine its cheek would be. I didn't really want to get too close here though because these guys on occasion can get pretty aggressive and territorial over their hidey holes so I decided to leave it be. Not too long after I got distracted by this pretty big brain coral and a little lizard fish that had decided to sit on top. Despite its small size, lizard fish are predatory fish in the Maldives with their mouths being filled with tiny, tiny razor sharp teeth, which are great for eating little crustacean species. They're also biofluorescent when you shine a UV light on them and end up looking really green. So that's probably got something to do with communication between other members of the same species, or again, could be to do with camouflage. I'm trying to get to the entrance to the drop off, but I'm getting distracted by all sorts of things here. So this one is a powder blue surgeon fish or powder blue tank. Yep, that's right relative to Dory from Finding Nemo. These are normally pretty social fish found in decent sized groups, especially when they're feeding like these ones are. They're a really nice blue color and interestingly, the more vibrant blue they are tends to indicate how healthy that individual fish is. Don't be fooled by how pretty they are though because these fish have a really, really sharp tail which is often referred to as their scalpel and it's used as a defense mechanism. So mind your hands with these ones. I then managed to get a little bit too close to this anemone fish, otherwise known as a clownfish. So this one is Clark's anemone fish identified by its darker body color. This particular individual was protecting its anemone pretty well, getting right up close and personal with my underwater camera. Clownfish tend to have a strict dominance hierarchy with the largest and most aggressive fish in the anemone always being a female. So this is undoubtedly the female defending her home. You go girl. Okay, right, I'm finally at the sand channel that goes out towards the drop off here, but just my luck, I'm getting accosted by this Indian triggerfish. Triggerfish are some of the most aggressive fish species out there, and when they've laid their eggs in a nest, they will defend that nest violently. There's actually two Indian triggerfish here defending the entire length of the channel that goes out to the drop off, but this one in particular was really, really not happy with me at all. When they're defending their nest sites, which are almost impossible to see, they'll tend to do these little charges at you where 
where they swim really quickly and then turn away. But before I started filming here, I actually had both of these triggerfish full blown biting my fins as I was swimming backwards. They literally just came out of nowhere. So I decided to back off a little bit and then start filming. But you could just see how riled up this one is. Another key feature that can help you tell when a triggerfish is really pissed off is when they erect their first dorsal fin. So normally triggerfish have the first dorsal down and it's basically invisible. But when they're mad, that dorsal fin is triggered upwards and that acts as a warning signal to any creature that decides to get a little bit too close. Both of them were so annoyed, they were literally chasing every other fish species away from this sand channel. And the crazy thing here is that Indian triggerfish are reportedly one of the least aggressive triggerfish species out there, which I find pretty hard to believe considering how angry these two were. I knew relatively quickly I was gonna have to find a different route to the drop off because all triggerfish species are known to have a nasty bite and I didn't fancy taking one for the team here. But I'm really glad that I did find a different route because I bumped into this awesome juvenile green sea turtle. This one just happened to be coming up to the surface for some air as I was heading out over the drop off. Initially at the time, I thought this might be a hawksbill sea turtle because of the size, but when I came back and looked at the footage, it's definitely just a small green sea turtle. You can see it doesn't really have a hooked mouth like a hawksbill has, nor does it really have overlapping shell scutes around the outside of its shell. Another pretty cool way of differentiating between hawksbills and green sea turtles is that green sea turtles only have one claw about halfway down their pectoral fins, which you can see here if I zoom in a little bit and hawksbills have two. Because we were both drifting in the current a bit, I decided that I was gonna leave this little green sea turtle in peace while it was getting some air. Okay, here we go, finally at the drop-off. This is always the best part of any snorkel. The drop-off is absolutely amazing to see. It's essentially just this steep wall that drops all the way down to 25 or 30 meters, maybe even deeper in some other places. And the whole wall is just littered with marine life. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of tropical reef fish. This is usually one of the most active places of any coral reef because you get all of the resident fish species that are sticking to the corals, but you'll also get the larger offshore fish species coming in to see if there's anything they can feed on. As well as this, you get a pretty big influx of plankton moving in from deeper waters, which provides food for the corals and other marine species that live here. Literally in this frame just here, we've got a false reef bannerman, which looks like a Moorish idol, but actually isn't. A nice five saddle parrot fish really briefly, and then loads of these black pyramid butterfly fish all swimming together. And then a unicorn fish over there to the side. Because the drop off is where deep meat shallow, you tend to get a bit more larger marine life activity hanging out over here because the food availability is just really high. And that's when I spotted this really cool black tip reef shark. Still only a juvenile and very wary of me. Check out the creature feature that we did on black tip reef sharks, by the way, guys, they are awesome little sharks. And then almost immediately, I had a white tip reef shark cruise by as well. Again, only a juvenile, but both black tip reef sharks and white tip reef sharks are generally quite small shark species. They'll again be cruising around these shallow atolls for safety and easy pickings when it comes to food. A little bit further along down the wall, I was really excited to find this blackfoot anemone fish, which is another clownfish species, but you can see it's very different in color to the Clark's anemone fish that we saw earlier. This is definitely exciting because this clownfish species is actually endemic to the Maldives and Sri Lanka. So you won't find this fish anywhere else in the world. Awesome. Like all other clownfish species, they have a mutual relationship with the anemone species that they live in. So they're covered in this mucus layer that protects them from the sting of the anemone so they can safely live inside it. And this gives protection for the clownfish, but the anemone also gets some benefit as well because the clownfish defends that anemone from any other fish that might wanna feed on the tentacles like butterfly fish. I then spotted this beautiful regal angel fish, although this one was pretty shy. You can just about see it popping out in between the rocks and corals. That is a pretty normal behavior for this species as it does like to hide from any potential predators. Not long after I turned around and spotted this sheephead parrotfish munching on some algae from the rocks and coral. Parrotfish are actually so important for healthy coral reefs because they eat the algae on corals, which allows the corals to then flourish. And the crazy thing here is when they poo, they actually poo out white sand. In the Maldives, scientific studies have shown that parrotfish are responsible for producing up to 85% of new sand grade sediment on coral reefs every single year. Large swathes of white sand beaches in tropical parts of the world have been produced by parrotfishes. So just remember that next time you're sitting on a white sand beach you're sitting on parrotfish poo. Somehow I managed to spot this leopard flounder next who decided to move from its camouflage position in the sand next to me. I'd have never have spotted this guy if he hadn't started swimming. These fish use color again to camouflage themselves into the sand and rocky substrate on the bottom of the sea. And occasionally they can even turn themselves almost see-through to hide from predators, which is awesome. I tend to be a bit of a nosy snorkeler when I'm out in the sea. I always like to look under rocks and crevices because so many things are always hiding there. And that's how I managed to find this common scorpion fish 
fish. So these venomous fish are so expertly camouflaged, it's almost impossible to see when they're sitting in and amongst the rocks and corals. And it's this camouflage that can make them pretty dangerous as people often don't see them and either accidentally touch them with their hands or step on them. Doing so will almost certainly mean you get pierced with their venomous dorsal spines and that's gonna be a very painful experience. Scorpion fish probably aren't gonna kill you with that venom like a stonefish might, but damn, that is gonna hurt. So remember how I was telling you the drop-off brings in some of the larger predatory fish species? Well, here's two bluefin trevally or bluefin jackfish. They've got these gorgeous colors and really shimmer in the water. And here we're seeing two of them patrolling the outer edge of the reef wall, which is a pretty common behavior for the species. They'll spend most of the day in groups of two or more individuals just going back and forth along the reef wall hunting for food, which is mostly other fish species. They look pretty chill here, but these fish are fast and strong swimmers. And when they want to go, they go at speed. Carrying on down the wall, we've got this little peacock grouper down here. No guessing as to why it's called that with those bots. And then these awesome fish that I've never seen before. These are phantom banner fish. And if I pause it and zoom in here for you, you can see they're really, really unique. They've got this odd V-shaped body and this very distinct squished face. I'm not quite sure if you can see it very well here, but they've also got a horn in between their eyes, which makes their face look even more squished. These phantom banner fish actually then led me to a little rocky crevice where just towards the back, you can see what I think is a white lined lionfish. It's a little bit far back, so I'm not 100% sure on the ID, but I think it's a white lined one. Again, these guys have venomous spines, so are definitely not one to put your hands anywhere near, but they are native to this part of the world, unlike the invasive ones you'll get towards Florida and the Caribbean. So coming towards the end of my snorkel along the reef wall, I came across this big old behemoth. This is a Titan triggerfish. Remember the triggerfish that was harassing me earlier in this video? Well, this one is the biggest species of triggerfish in this part of the world. They can reach sizes of just under a meter in length, and their mouth is filled with really nasty sharp teeth, and they can cause serious damage to you if they decide to bite. Titan triggerfish are so important for the health of coral reefs here though, as they eat sea urchins and starfish that might be feeding on the corals. So they are very much needed to keep the reef healthy and in balance. The Titan triggerfish ended up getting distracted by something. So I decided to follow it up that wall where it looked like it had joined up with a bluefin trevally and another black cheek mori there, which are two other predatory fish species. So I do reckon something was going on here. Perhaps an easy meal maybe had drawn all these fish in together. I couldn't quite see exactly what was going on so I decided to go in a little bit closer to check it all out and that's when the Titan Triggerfish fired up that first dorsal fin and I was like nope I am not taking a bite from this absolute beast of a fish so I backed up big time. It's a pretty good warning signal to be fair though. Okay so on the technicality this clip wasn't from my little reef snorkel but I felt like I had to include it in the video. We headed out on one of the ocean adventures and came across this beautiful reef manta ray. Mantas are pretty commonly found in the Maldives with their population estimated to be somewhere around 5,000 thousand individuals in total. Initially, this one was staying pretty deep, so you can't quite get an appreciation of its size, but it eventually started to come up a little bit closer towards the surface as it was just gulping down all of that plankton. And as it comes up, you can see it's definitely a decent sized one. The footage doesn't really do it justice because I've got my wide angle lens on, but I'd say from wingtip to wingtip, this one was at least three meters wide. What a beauty. Ooh, what'd you make of that then? That was pretty epic. The amount of marine life that you can see out in those waters in just a couple of meters of depth is absolutely incredible. What'd you make of that Titan Trigfish? Those guys are ones to watch out for. They will bite your hand off. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please, please do give it a like. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bite channel below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.